got a pair of classic from the heyday of Florsheim Imperial, Florsheim Imperial model 93602, long wing derbies, okay? Thrifted them for $8. All right, so let's go. Hello, everybody. It's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now, here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. You can just barely see the logo in there. You can see the looping there. You, I wouldn't be able to identify it unless um, I had actually seen it already before. Uh, part of the Florsheim logo there, and you can see in here, right? It does say Florsheim Imperial, so I know it's Florsheim for sure, because they have been resold at some point. These things have a double oak, meaning two layers, one layer of leather there, second layer of midsole, and then that's the welt. So it's a double oak sole that's been resold, the heels have been replaced. And in this one here, you can see a little bit of the logo um, here. Right there, you can just see the last part of the word shoe. And that says the Florsheim Shoe Company. And it's got the big scripted Florsheim logo, if it were still there. According to vcleat.com, V is in Victor, cleat.com, vcleat.com, the best website for vintage, especially Florsheim, but US vintage shoes. Um, but according to vcleat, this model, I will show you the model number there. Uh, it's a little clearer on this one. If you can see it there, right? The model number is 936, uh, I'm reading it backwards on the screen, 93602, it's on the bottom line, 93602. Their size is nine and a half. The width is D, which is a standard width. And I can't really read very clearly. I think it's, uh, is it I? But I think it's C. So the date code C, uh, that second letter C, um, a would be year zero, so B would be one, C would be two. Um, so he says that this shoe was made from 1958 to 88, so the last year's ending in a two, so this is probably 1982 or 1972, more than likely, right? So let's get going. Uh, shoe trees, standard routine I'm going to do to them. First shoe trees, I don't know, there's, uh, scuffing's pretty bad. They're, they look just really dry and dusty. The leather the leather feels like it's in very good condition though. Uh, dry, but so I'll moisturize them, but first I'm gonna clean them with saddle soap. I don't see a ton of wax on them. Um, so I'm gonna see as I go if they need any stripping. I don't know, maybe a, a little bit um, with a Reno mat, Sapphire Reno mat to strip them. Like I said, the leather's very, very nice. It's very, feels very supple. I don't see any cracking on them. And this is pebble green, pebble green calf skin. I don't see any cracking anywhere. So I think these things will clean up. They just look really terrible. I'm gonna put new heels on them too, uh, new new top lifts. And uh, so let's get going. Uh, I think this is officially dead. I don't think I'm, I mean, I guess I probably could clear the leather, but I think I'm gonna try, try something different. Um, so I think I'm gonna try something different instead. I'm gonna use a Lexol leather cleaner. I've used this a couple times before. Directions, shake bottle well. Apply on a clean microfiber cloth. I don't think I have a microfiber cloth, and I certainly don't have a Lexol sponge, so I'm just gonna use a regular cloth, hope it works. Um, for deep clean massage into your leather, wipe away foam and dirt using a damp cloth, towel dry. To complete leather treatment, follow a Lexol deep conditioner. Okay, uh, so apply with a clean microfiber cloth. So I guess I'm gonna get two, a damp one and a dry one. So the first thing I wanna to do to start to get these things back into shape you know, get these wrinkles out of the van. I got the perfect thing here. I've got a pair of floor shine. I've got a pair of floor shine shoe trees. How awesome is that for a full van? Uh, and what size are these? There are different sizes. These are large, which are actually gonna be a little bit too large, but I think I'm gonna force them in. These nine and a half, oh yeah, they're tight. But that's what I really want, you know, to, to stretch these things out. In other words, I probably wouldn't use this large size uh, every day on this shoe. It's, it's on a tight side, but that's going to help, especially when they, you condition and clean the leather. Look how much better that looks already. When you condition and clean the leather with them in while it's damp, then that really helps a lot. And look at that, I just noticed there was a cut in the leather. Can you see that? I'll deal with that in a little bit. Um, generally start with the left shoe first. Shake vigorously, I think it said. Enough. I don't 
that right. Apply on the clean microfiber cloth. Okay, well, I'll get a clean spot on my rag. All right, I think this will be fine. All right, let's see what happens. It's kind of, uh, it's liquid, but it's got a thick consistency, right? Now, one other thing I gotta do is let's take the laces out. Oops. staining there on the leather from the corrosion from the ice days over the years. Ooh, but it does come off. The scrub, it does almost come off. I'm not sure how I like this compared to the saddle soap. I don't know if this is going to sound really dumb or not, but the saddle soap creates a lather. And maybe it is just psychological, but the lather makes me feel like it's doing You gotta admit that is a lot better. Okay. Let it dry. We got the camera off, other shoe off. It may not be true, but I just feel like the Lexol um, didn't do as much. I don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and salvage the last little bit that I have here of my saddle soap. Try. Get some leather going here. If I can. And let me see. Especially I also want to get into the welt. I like this brush better for getting into the welt. This is warm water in the tin. You take the I've got a whole other video on saddle soap. It's actually one of the most successful videos. Um, but you fill the lid with warm water. spray bottle. A few squirts in. I would not wipe the interior of the shoe out. I would just squirt it in and let it go. You don't want to wipe off any inking or labeling or anything like that. Just squirt it in, let it go. Don't breathe the fumes. That should be plenty. Let them air out. Woo! Yeah, they got a fair amount of wear. They don't, wouldn't need to be. They could still be worn quite a bit more, but I think it'll really improve the looks of the shoe a lot. It's not terribly difficult. And I'm going to show you a tool I picked up. This is not really the right tool, but it's similar to what the cobblers use. I think the ones the cobblers use are a little wider. It's actually a crimping tool that I picked up for crimping on clamps um, onto tubing. I was building a solar-powered pool heater. But anyway, I'm going to try it out on here. Oops. Look at that. Oh, wow, guys. Oh, this is going to be awesome. 
we, I don't think it's quite wide enough, so I don't get the as much grip as the real tool would give. And I think it's still gonna work. I don't get as much leverage. Oh, guys. Okay, let me show you this. Ow, 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 my nails are, that hurt. I just cut myself. Do you see all these holes? I'm gonna cut in a picture. This was an original V cleat heel. It has like 50 some nails going through. That's interesting. I didn't expect, okay, yeah, I did. I thought those nails would come out with that, but I believe these pins, yep. Wow, that's a lot of pins to hold on a top lift. Uh, we're gonna find out. I don't know if these pins hold on the top lift as well. They might. And then right here, you can see the imprint of it. You see right there? So let me show you something. Again, from vcleat.com, you can see the outline of the vcleat clearly. It was right there. It's a triangle, okay, stud, a triangle piece of metal with a stud in it. And you can see it's inset back from the heel. And in 1974, I believe this is the first year, before 1974, the V cleats were flush with the heel. So if I know this is um, uh, 83 or 73 with an inset, this has to be 1983 because it was a 1973 shoe, that V cleat would be flush. So now I know that this shoe was made in 1983. Isn't that cool? I like this tool, this works. See, it's a little bit of separation there, so. I think what that means is I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and re-glue it. Uh -huh. This is the original heel base from Florsheim then. Wow. So is that a, looks like they replaced the heel or the sole and they didn't go all the way back. Looks like they just stopped there behind the heel, which would make sense, I guess. Okay, so I'll have to put this back on, but we'll get to that. Notice these are not nails, they're pins. In other words, they don't have a head on them. And here's what I've got. Good your nail light. Oh, holy mackerel. That is just barely big enough. just barely big enough. Wow. That's going to be tight. You can take the sapphire. Reno matte stuff is really stinky. It's got the solvent based. Not as harsh as acetone, but one dab there and we'll take it right off. Got some safety equipment and I'll get these gloves on, uh, earplugs, Safety glasses. I'm just going to smooth it down real quick. Master all-purpose cement. This is what a lot of the pros actually use. I use it in a well-ventilated area. I got this from eBay, $38 a can.
flip it around. See, this way it's level. That way it's angled up. I think I want it this way. And you see, I have the lining peeled back so that if the nails poke through, they'll hit this metal and cinch over and they won't poke into the feet. And now, so this is the outside. And that's the outside. See, there's the V-cleat outside. There's the outside. just a little bit now in this next section I apologize I think I had the camera on slow motion setting instead of a regular videotaping but this is just applying glue to the uh, heel base and to the bottom side of the top lift itself getting them both you know covered well covered with glue letting that dry set up um, and then uh, basically you know just placing it on there um, lining up the front edge with the front edge of the heel gluing it on and hammering it down Not sure if this is going to be dark enough, but I'd rather start too light and darken it.
says directions shake well apply to the edge of leather and rub briskly. Repeat as necessary for a smooth edge. Once dry, use Fubing's edge coat to color the edge. Oops, so I should have put this on before that. Remember, I'm not a professional. I'm really messing around with this. I'm really just experimenting and trying to learn, okay? Um, use on finished or unfinished leather edges prior to finishing. So I should have done that before. But let's just see what it does kind of effect. I did shake it. It's very thick, right? Darker one. This is Saphir Medal Dior. This is a medium brown number 37. Much improved, huh?
beautiful that leather edge is. It's not perfect. That's not bad, huh? Really just wasn't willing to, you know, I mean, I really should have taken a sanding block and some finer sandpaper and gone over that, but that's not too bad, though, is it, you know? Still some life left in these, for sure. One more? Yeah, let's get on one more. It's pebble green, so I don't want to go crazy with it. Heels are definitely not perfect edges of the soles, but I think they're reasonable for a 37 year old shoe that's been resold. I changed the laces, I saw that, I noticed that I put flat laces in, the two laces didn't match, somebody had changed one along the way. Irritated me. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for watching. All right, hope you guys have a great day. God bless. Check out my channel if you want to see some other similar videos. Uh, I've got probably around 100 videos on a wide variety of things uh, dealing with men's dress shoes. All right, God bless. Take care.